Hey, what's up addicts? Thanks so much for tuning into another Addicted Fishing tutorial. If you're brand new to our channel, you're gonna find things like how to's, fishing entertainment, all sorts of inspiring videos. So if you love fishing, be sure to tap that subscribe button. Today, we're gonna be talking about different ways to rig your bait down here in the Astoria or other fisheries where you're fishing Chinook and Coho salmon. We got Nick Popoff, Peel the Real Guide Service. We're gonna show you a bunch of cool ways to rig the bait right now. All right guys, so Nick, we just filmed a video out on the water kind of just running through bait with everyone and just kind of talking about all the different baits that you can use in these estuaries. We'll drop a link down below, but I knew people were gonna be like, okay, we learned all that, now how do we rig it, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So let's, let's. you got a little smorgasbord going here, dude. Wanna show us kind of how to rig this stuff? Yeah, how are people yeah. gonna get out here and fish to catch coho or chinook? Perfect, perfect. So we went over the two types of baits we use. We use anchovies and herring as far as fresh bait goes, along with the spinners, but we're gonna cover bait today. So. I'm gonna start with the herring, um, and I'll start with a cut plug herring. So this is a, a plug cutter. Uh, you can use this or you can freehand it. And basically all this is doing is creating an edge on the bait, and it allows the bait to spin once the hooks are properly placed. So all I do is I just lay the bait in the cutter, and you just slide it up against the back and just make a nice slow cut, and then push through the backbone. Because it's really important that when you cut that bait that you have a nice flat edge. You don't want that edge all jagged and torn down at the bottom. Because if it tears down here, as soon as you get pressure from the water on that, it's going to rip the belly of the herring out and it's not going to be effectively spinning like we want it to. So then some guys leave the guts in, some guys pull the guts out. I just squeeze the belly of the bait and then pull the guts out like that. One and thing to note too that I wanted to mention real quick. As you can see, he's using like a skinny yep. style knife. You want to use like a skinnier style bait knife or a skinny small fillet knife because yep. if you use a thicker blade, that's when you start to smash Ab the herring. Absolutely, and it's I, I try to find the, and that's why I love this little six inch knife here because from Gerber, is this thing is so thin that it, you want the cleanest slice you can get through the bait. I mean, it's trying to, I mean, if, I wish the sharpest thing you can use, that's, that's what you're looking for. Because like I said, it's real important to have that perfectly smooth, beveled edge like that. And that's gonna help your spin in the long run. So basically once we've done that, discard the head and pull the guts out of it. So there's a couple different ways to, to rig your hooks. The idea of this is you want a super, there's a lot of different theories behind how you want your herring to spin, whether you want a big looping roll or a slow tight, I mean a fast tight roll. He's not flipping you off guys. I yeah, I'm not, <laughs> just pointing with my middle finger. <laughs> so the, the most important thing for me is that my herring spins tight, that the tail stays real tight like this. You want it everything in motion. You don't want the tail waving around like this because it's keeping, you want everything in a it's very seam line. So is what I like to do, there's two different ways I rig them. I'll take, this is the high side of the bait here and the low side of the bait and that's created by the bevel we use. So is what I do is I take this, my, my back hook, so I have a two hook rig. This one just happens to be a sliding rig. I typically fish the, the fixed rigs when I'm herring fishing but I'm gonna use this for, for demonstration purposes so I can show you how to rig a whole anchovy and a whole herring. But, so what I do is I take, and there's two different ways, and most of the time I will use the second method, but I go through the high side on this method, and I pull it out, and you wanna be real careful pulling this out. You gotta be careful when you trim your knot down that you don't have a tag in, because you don't wanna punch a big hole in your bait and have a big rip in it. So, pull it through the scales nice and softly, and then I just rotate this hook up right here and I go right up the right up the spine of this bait. Just kind of right like that, right up the spine. You know, and I favor the low side a tiny bit on this, so you want it kind of on the low side of the backbone. So that's one way. And this is gonna create a super tight spin. There's not gonna be any flare to this. And I'm very meticulous about how my herring spins. So if, if I do hook one, uh, and, and it's got a tail wag to it, I'm gonna toss that bait. I just throw it away. I don't try to rehook the hooks through it 14 times. So that will spin nice and tight. And that's the other reason it's really important, and that's why I use this versus freehand cutting, is because I know where to put my hooks in every single bait that I cut. Every bait is gonna be the same. I'm not gonna have one at a steeper angle, one at a shallower angle, so on and so forth. So this is huge for me. A lot of guys don't use it. You don't have to use it by any means as long as you have a beveled edge. So that's one way to rig the, the cut plug herring. And then I will show you, I'm gonna walk you through this one more time. So 
just place the bait on the tray. It doesn't matter if it's at the top or the bottom, it creates the same beveled edge. Just the most important is that you get a nice smooth cut on there. So I like to go real slow at the beginning and then push through the backbone. Nice sharp knife, really important. And then once again, we'll, I always remove the guts because I feel like when the guts are in there, it'll blow the belly of the bait out because there's, so, there's a lot of tide and current out here. So that water is forced in here, which is what creates the spin. And if you got guts and stuff in there, it just pulls on the belly and ends up tearing. So on this one, I go through the low side of the bait. So I'm on the opposite side of the bait this time, through the low side of the bait. And I go nice and smooth through there, same thing. And then I take this back hook here and I'm gonna go from the high side to the low side. So I'm kind of going, I go in at the high side and out the low side. So on the top, it's right along the spine again. Basically, as long as you keep that front hook somewhere tight in there, you know, along the spine of that bait, it's gonna spin pretty good. You're gonna have a pretty good spin. Most important, have a good cut and get the guts out of there and you're good to go. So that is the second way to rig a cut plug herring. Either way will work. There's no particular one that works better than others and I don't use them for, you know, one for Chinook and one for Coho. I just, I like to do things different sometimes and I'll run one side with one ring and one with the other. They never really outperform each other. So I should probably just stick to one way. <laughs> All right, so next we'll move to, actually we'll do a, we'll do a, a whole herring next. So this one's a little trickier and, and this isn't, you know, there's tons of ways to do this. You can use toothpicks with it. I'm just gonna show you one way. And basically all I do is go in right behind the eyes and I go pretty soft through there. And then this one's really important that you have the sliding rig. You have to have this top hook sliding unless you have some special way that I don't know about. <laughs> but so you take this back hook and you come back here about three quarters of the way through the bait, back towards the, I, I go right back towards the back of the, the dorsal fin, and I just come right out like so. And all this is doing is this hook here, I just leave it just like that, because all that is doing essentially is just your pivot point to create a bend, and I'll show you why here in a second. So my next hook is gonna be, really the point of this is also to create bend, but this is to keep its mouth shut. So you just go right through the lips and keep that, that mouth shut. You really wanna go right through the middle of the bone there so you get a good hook on them there. And then, now the sliding rig we talked about, if you were to put this bait in the water just like this, it's not gonna spin. It's just gonna sit there straight in the water because there's nothing, there's no beveled edge to it and it's just gonna swim like a fish would. So then you basically pull, draw tight on this hook here and then you're just gonna create your bend. And you know, in slower water, if you're trolling slower, you're gonna go less, uh, uh, less bend. So you'll, you know, a small kink in the bait like so. If you're gonna be in, I mean, if you're trolling in fast water, excuse me, you're gonna want a smaller bend to it. And if you're trolling slower, you're gonna want more of a bend to it because you're gonna need more pull to create that bait to spin around and around. So this is very similar to, to how I'm gonna rig an anchovy too, but I will show you that as well because they're different bait and different size. But we talked about this in the last video, go check that out because it, it kind of walks through, you know, how to present one of these and the different things, uh, different ways to fish them. So exactly. I'm gonna tear this one off here, wasting all my good bait. <laughs> Just kidding, the day's over. But, <clears throat> now so that's how you rig your whole herring this is basically going to be there's two ways to rig an anchovy if you don't have a ton of current no big deal so you can go right through the head so you go through the bottom jaw and this is to pin the mouth shut once again so you go bot through the bottom jaw with the top hook okay because that's going to always be your nose hook and then you come back down here and you're going to do that same exact thing to create the bend so you can just go there's two ways to put place this hook and I'll show you both ways. So just like on the last bait, just right through the middle there. And then, so now you have one through the nose, one through the side, just like on the whole herring. And then you just draw this tight and that's gonna create your bend just like that. Now, when you get a really fast current, this way doesn't fish quite as well because it's, this hook tends to fall over and the gills will flare out. 
So they make helmets for these as well. Um, and they, they make a little helmet. And I rig them the same way, just two hooks and one through the belly to create tension. But they put the helmet on to protect the gills. So I don't typically fish this presentation when the current is really, really hard and fast. Nor do I fish the whole herring, I just run a cut plug. Um, and then, oops, I was gonna show you that other, how, to, how some guys rig the other hook. Um, I don't like this way myself because your hook is buried so and I don't but it does create a, a, a good spin and it does protect it from blowing or pulling off but some guys will just run this directly into the fish like so and and so your hooks point is covered and some guys will run it all the way through the bait on the other side but I don't do that. I, I typically run it the first way I showed you, but that is another way. And this is gonna create that bend for you just the same exact way. So you really gotta let them eat this, and that's why I don't like it. With the hook, exp doesn't have a hook exposed. Yeah, I would never rig it that way. Dude, I've seen so many guys show me this way, and I I, I just could never do it. But for, for me, I always- I mean, I guess if it works for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried, well, I started fishing chovies like this, and uh -huh. I, I got an old timer showed me this, and I'm like, dude, how do they get hooked, yeah. <laughs> you know? But it, I, I don't know, that goes back to let the fish eat it, you know? We have all pulled in baits today, even when we were out there trolling that were disintegrated. So yeah. I mean, the hook gets to them at some point, just not my cup of tea. There's also another cool thing you can do. Anchovies gills are just known for flaring out, like in the water, the current hits them and it flares them out. You can put a little, you know, the rubber bands for the braces, you can put those right around their gill plate after you've rigged them up and it'll hold their gill plate nice. That's a good idea. Too. So some guys will put yeah, like a little- dental rubber bands. Yeah, and some guys will put a little crease right here in the top of their head, not very much, but it just allows that rubber band to dig in there and, and so it's got a point to hold it tight. So there's just a little crease there and they wrap the rubber band right what over about there. about just like a couple half inches of stretchy thread? Yeah, and some guys will use stretchy thread right around the mouth and stuff, or even half hitch on the lines. Yeah. You know, there's so many different ways to effectively fish an anchovy or effectively fish a herring. Like, I'm sure that you guys watching are gonna be like, oh, that's not how I rig it, I rig it this way, you know? But that, that just goes to show, you know, all you need is a good spin. You know, you need the basics to get out there and get started. And this is kind of the basics of, you know, what we do out here every day. And then it comes to technique, you know, troll speed and things like that. But if you don't have your bait program dialed down, you're not fishing. So this is most important. Well, dude, thanks for showing these addicts out there yeah. how to rate, how to rig these freaking anchovies and herring. You guys, make sure you guys drop a comment below and let us know what other videos you guys want to see or what you want to learn. I already know we're going to get the question, Nick. People are going to ask how to rig those anchovy helmets because <laughs> we've know. gotten that question a bunch. So I'm sure we'll have a video coming of that at the future. But for now, check the links down below. We got a couple other videos for you guys to watch talking about the same fishery. Do you have any trips coming up, dude, available? I do. I have, um, you know, here in Astoria, I have September 4th open and that's my only opening. I was going to kind of take it off, but if someone wants to fish, give me a call. I'd love to get you out. And then I moved down uh, into the Tillamook area to start fishing falshin up down there. So killer. I have a few dates in October available, and uh, it's a lot of good fishing down there. It's fun down there. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of my favorite place to be. If you guys want to get out with Nick, we'll have that link down below so you guys can check it out. Give him a call, get out, catch some salmon, or even learn these techniques a little bit more in depth with him out on the water. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate all you addicts out there for watching our videos. We're gonna keep making them if you keep watching them. That's right. We'll see you on the river. See you on the river, guys.